willkommen beim Oktoberfest in Xanten. Mein Name ist Wilfried Meyer, bin der Wiesenwirt des Sanden Oktoberfestes und richte das Oktoberfest schon seit 16 Jahren aus. Ich bin überzeugter Oktoberfest-Fan und habe die Stimmung von der Münchner Wiesen versucht zum Niederrhein zu bringen. Es ist mir gelungen, wir haben mittlerweile über 4.500 Gäste, täglich bei Abendveranstaltungen und an den Sonntagsveranstaltungen sind es 3.000 Gäste, insgesamt über 50.000 Besucher, die unsere Veranstaltung besuchen. Das Schönste oder das Wichtigste bei so einer Veranstaltung ist die Musik. Wir haben eine Band auch aus Bayern und die sind auch seit 16 Jahren dabei und die rocken ab und die bringen die Stimmung ins Zelt. Welcome back to Global Village. I'm Buddy Kunana. Tonight's topic is German Club and the Philippines. And uh, that video you saw was one of the highlights of uh, the official Oktoberfest in Munich. And joining us now, or uh, still, still with us, is uh, Sister Theresia Barkay. And joining her is Sister Maria Dolores Tan, both of the Sisters of Christian Charity and both with the Margareta Home for the Blind. Sisters, you know, tonight was about, uh, is about the German club and also German culture and, of course, Oktoberfest. We've been showing all these nice videos. And um, do you, sisters, being uh, belonging to a, a German, uh, German foundation and German, German missionary order, do you celebrate Oktoberfest? Yes. Uh -huh. In yeah. Germany, every, in Germany, you think? Uh, it is specifically in Munich, so in our area it's not so common to celebrate uh, Oktoberfest, but it comes more now also to other region, regions, but everybody knows Oktoberfest, yes. many people go there, yes. and uh, in so far, yes. And here in the Philippines, we were invited to Oktoberfest, and we celebrate in our home. Very good. Sister Maria? Yes. For the Oktoberfest, since we have it at home, we had the German music, of course, provided by Sister Theresia, also all the CDs. So we have a lot of dancing. And of course, Oktoberfest has a beer. So on that day, our girls are allowed to drink a little bit of beer, okay, and yeah, also yeah. with pizza, that's all we have. Very nice, very nice. No, but, it, but you know, it's, it's a nice tradition uh -huh. and, uh, and you know, the whole festivity behind it, right. uh -huh. that cultural tradition, very rich cultural tradition, it's, uh -huh. it's, it's always a lot of fun and, uh, right. and I'm glad that you sisters are keeping up in your own small way, That's keeping right. the tradition alive of the Oktoberfest, excellent, uh -huh. especially with your partners, the German club. That's right. A dynamic yeah. group of guys and men and women yeah. of the uh -huh. club uh -huh. and uh, great work they're doing, yeah. helping your foundation. Now, okay, let's talk about um, the Margareta Home for the Blind, more of that. Sister Maria, um, what do you do for the home, for the center specifically? Okay. What, what do you handle? Okay. Specifically, I handle the administration of the home. Okay. Uh, uh, communications with the benefactors, arranging all the schedules when they want to come, and also for the medical needs of the children, and things like anything that runs the, the center, the Margareta home. Yes. Because that's what I usually take care of then. And as I said, mainly it's the benefactors that we have to deal with, how to communicate with them, sending them emails for thank you every month, and uh, just to keep them updated with what's going on. Because for us, we believe that if you help us, then you have the right to know what's going on with your money. So that's why we, we try to communicate with them and really help them out yeah. and show them what we are doing. And if they think it's still worth helping, then they will continue to help. But then we are open for any suggestion if they can give us how to improve our service to the children, for the blind girls. Very good. So it's well. Sisters, how did this start? I mean, how big was it? How big was the Margareta Home for the Blind when it first started? Okay. Actually, we started with nothing. Okay. Uh, just a brief background. I, I came from the United States and sisters from Germany. And uh, I opened my mouth and wanted to help the Philippines. So I was uh, the general superior came to the Philippines to study the possibilities. And they found out the needs for the blind. 
and it's for the blind. So Sister Teresa from Germany was asked to come also, and that's how we started. Uh, in the beginning, it's not really meant directly to the blind home, but we just have to reach out to different communities to help. But then we found out in the first year that there's a, a lady who's blind and learned massage, and it's not a safe place for them. Because you know, in the squatter area, men are drinking and everything. So then Sister Teresa and I decided we should open a home, a safe place for them. And that's how we started. And after having the home for the blind, there's a nearby uh, rehabilitation center that teach massage for the girls also. So we start taking in the girls to have a place for us to live while they're studying. And then after they finish their, their course in massage, we try to follow them up to find a job and find a place where they can live safely. And that's how everything started. But then we have uh, two girls who was uh, asked to, for us to take in. No, one, one girl first, yes. Joanne. She's a, a blind girl, and a young girl. But we said if we're helping girls and blind, we can take her in also. So we started with one girl. And now she's a teacher by profession, also blind, and has a family with two, my boy and a girl. Oh, wow, well, that's uh, a lovely uh, story. Yes, thank you. Huh? Yeah. Now, um, how many girls do you have today in, okay. under your care? Okay. How big is the center? Okay, now we have 14, 14 okay. girls, and we're expecting one more sometimes in July to yes. come in. Yes. From, uh, how do they find you, sister? How do these girls find mm -hmm. the center? How do, you, how do they reach you? How do you, you know? Find. Just most most of the time by uh, people who know us, especially other sisters or fathers who uh, know communities and they get uh, in contact with the family or with a blind child that is alone, needs help, and then they remember, oh, we know a, a place where they are. So most of the girls came that way. Yes. Or uh, women organizations who bring them over, or even the government, because we are accredited also. Yes. So different ways how they come. Or uh, the last one practically came because one lady who works for another organization saw our blind girls in the neighborhood and she remembered this girl begging in their church in Sama. And then she uh, reached out to us, so she came to us. What are the average ages of the girls in your care? At the ages, it's range very, very uh, wide. Yes. The youngest is about 10 or 11, and the oldest is about 32 or 33. Okay, uh -huh. okay. okay. But, um, you have a wide range, uh, oh. like a wide age range, okay. and you have 14 girls. Mm -hmm. What do you provide them specifically? Okay. What the, are the special uh, okay. needs that you, that, that you fulfill? Okay. The first thing that we really s shared with them is the love, because they don't experience love at all. Okay? So once they experience love, then you can do whatever you want with them. And so education is part of them. It's very strong for us, the education. You, you teach them in the center, or okay. do they go outside? Okay. For the mentally challenged, or special, we call them special girls, Sister Teresa teach them uh, basic braille, reading and writing, math, and the daily living skills at home for the specials. But then those who can go to school mentally or uh, educationally, then they go to a nearby elementary school and uh, high school. And then for those who wants to go to college, we sent to Isabella Cal in Isabella's Kawayan City, and they go to college. In fact, we have about five graduates now. And Joanne, the first girl who came to us, remember I told you the very first one, she's now the teacher and she used to bravo. teach. Okay. Bravo. No, uh, I'm saying uh, bravo because okay. I'll tell you why. Uh. I'm especially close to Kawayan City. Okay. I'm a very good friend of Kawayan City Mayor Bernard D. Okay. And I'm so happy that, that his That's city is involved uh, in this yes. project. It's, it's Dr. Maramag, Irene yes. Maramag. She's the one. Huh? We met her in one event. She came with a group of blind here to Manila and we met because that was a group of blind, we had a group of blind. And then she said, I'm willing to help you because the first one who would finish high school came from that area, from Nueva Ecija, nearer there than here, so that she could go to college. She said, I have contact to the university and we might find an agreement. So it's for us, easier they transfer there and go to college there than to find a place here in Manila where we would 
have really problems to personally to yes. do that. Sisters, what are your plans for the future? Because you know you have 14 uh, young women in your mm -hmm. care, uh -huh. but the problem is massive. I mean, I'm sure this is, you know, must be very, if ever in your position, it would be, be very difficult for me because uh -huh. I want to help so many people, right. but your, your resources are obviously limited, okay. you know? So what are your plans okay. moving forward? Okay, our plan uh, to move forward, as I say, is to, to make sure that the girls who, are, who can be independent are independent, that they can move on back to their families, those who have families, you know, because in the, initially they come to us as garbage. But because of being with us, we try to get the family to come to us also. In fact, we have to literally pay them just to visit the family, the, the girl. Because you have to give them transportation fee, they give them food. And at the end, they said, I did not do my wash job now, so they need more money. So we really have to, but we are willing to do that for them to visit the girls. So our main uh, point also is to get the girls independent enough and also get the relationship with the parents good enough that they can go back to them. But then we have some who has no place to go. Yeah. We really have some. Yes. And uh, now it's the problem we have is to find a place, eventually how they can move on. But as long as we are around, we can help these girls who has no place to go. Yes, you know, it's, it's interesting you mentioned the word garbage because Sister Rezia mentioned, oh. said the same exact thing in the previous uh, segment oh. when uh, Fred was here. And it breaks the heart because unfortunately that is the way traditionally that a lot of families look, especially in, in, in the lower classes, look on, on, on people with disability. That's right. You're useless, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you're garbage, you're, you know, you're, you're a burden, mm -hmm. and it breaks the heart. Huh? We have one short incident that happened with Sister Teresa. We went to the airport, and we have the blind girls with us because to, to bring a sister you know, to go home to another country. Anyway, the security guards saw the girls with us, and they said, why, are they blind? And we said, of course, you can see they're blind. But say, why, they're not dirty, they're not, they're not garbage. I mean, that's the mentality we have already is, right away yeah. with the blind. Yeah. This is kind of sad. That's why what we want to, to uplift the dignity of the blind and try to invite as much people to come to Margareta home so that they can see the blind can be somebody. They are also children of God and they can be somebody and worth to be loved and to love also. They can love people. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And what, yeah. We, yeah, what, what we really would very much appreciate if more people in this country would join in this effort to, uh, to commit themselves to those people because we will not live forever. And these blind girls, there will be always new ones. There are for sure more of them. That people are devoted in this country really to promote their value, their dignity, and their possibilities to live a full life. Yes. Quickly before we end, what can we do to help? What can the public do? I mean, people watching now, I personally want to help. What can we do? Uh, I guess the awareness, first of all, that the, the blind really exist and they do need to be uh, identified as a human person, okay? And then those who are able to help will be more than grateful for any help that can be extended. Like, mainly like uh, communication with the children, like a visit to them, because those are the things that are hard to get. To, to, for them to visit, to, to talk to the girls and just, just to, to be spend with them. time in the spend center with your, yes, uh, with your folks. That's with, right. Uh, with because your for, children. for the, the, the monetary gift, for the financial, or for the needs, things that they need, people are giving. I should say, Philippines is a very generous country. Many, yes. many people help us. But it's mainly the to say who they are. Definitely. Uh, Sister, we have to, uh, we, unfortunately, come to end the <laughs> show, but if you'd like to thank. Some people who've helped you now. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Please, okay. go ahead. I would like to thank all the people who helped us in many, many ways, in a small ways or big ways, in our mission. Because every small thing, even just a smile to the girls is a big help. So we want to thank that to everybody who has something to do. Like especially this program now, okay, the Global For You, also Mr. Buddy, that uh, you are invited, we are invited here. So more people will be aware of the blind people and that they are really somebody who can love and can be loved. Thank okay, you very that, much. That's the main thing. Sister Maria, Sister Teresia, thank you very much for coming to the show. Thank I, you. I mean, it was an honor to have you here and please keep up God's good work. You're our heroes. Thank, thank you. you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. So guys, I hope you enjoyed our show tonight, German Club and the Philippines. Join us again next week here on Global Village and let us take you around the world. You all have a good evening. <laughs>